Meanwhile, Job Tech Institute Masai School has announced their latest fundraise, where the company has raised $10 million in a Series B round led by Omidya Network India, along with existing investors, including India Quotient and United Ventures, with the addition of Alteria Capital. Now, the round also saw participation from two of Indian sports stalwarts, the face of women's cricket, Mithali Raj, and legendary footballer, Baichung Bhutia, as investors and partners. Now, CNBC TV 18's Ritu Singh caught up with Prateek Shukla, the CEO and co founder of Masai School along with Mitali Raj and Baichung Bhutia to talk about the company's growth trajectory and Baichung Bhutia's take on what it'll take to get Indian football on the global map. Take a look. And we're here because Masai has just announced two new sporting legends as its investors in the company. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, you know, how did it come to be that two sporting legends are now putting in money in Masai? What are the plans on that front? How much have you raised? At what valuation, if you could fill us in? We were very clear that we wanted to bring in uh, two iconic personalities from the sports fraternity and I think uh, Bai Chung and Mithali are the best, uh, I can't think of anyone else than them. They are legends and uh, uh, and an inspiration for millions of people across the globe. So, well, No doubt about that at all Prateek, but uh, Mithali, if I were to get it from you, why did you decide to invest in Masai? Well see, I've uh, been uh, an advocate of equal playing field for men and women, girls and boys. Um, leading India for so many years. I led India for so many years. I've come across many such athletes from different walks of life. So uh, that's where I felt Masai is doing a great job in giving that equal playing field for them. And especially with the scholarship, you know, where um, I'm, I'm honored to be part of that. The, if in some way the scholarship helps such women who want to create an identity for themselves, I think it's, it's, it's great. And that is why I feel, you know, I wanted to be associated with Masai. And Baichun, what about you? And is this one of the first investments that you've made uh, in the education sector? Or, uh, well, in other in other? education sector, yes. Um, in fact, uh, you know, taking it forward, the concept of, uh, you know, Masai, uh, I think with the education system, what we're doing it right now is, I think, fantastic. In fact, uh, you know, the kids uh, who are selected uh, does not need to pay a fees. And uh, I think Masai does train them uh, and educate them and also get them a job. Uh, and that's where I think it benefits both the student and, and, and the company. But also, I think it's a great concept because it's a successful concept. Uh, we've seen that in football. I think a lot of European clubs do that concept and it's a very successful concept in which I think Indian football can do that. You know, in, in Europe, you spot the talent, you train them, make it Catch a big asset, yeah. make them a big asset yeah. uh, and they go on to play for their club. Uh, obviously, the players get a good, huge contract, mm -hmm. but at the, at the same time, it becomes an asset for the club to sell him in a in a bigger you know in a, in, in a bigger revenue so i think it, it is a very good concept that definitely would help uh, i think the education system with masai is brought it i hope indian football especially the club system starts following that concept catch them young train them and make them an asset and uh, hopefully sell them as well and it benefits the club the player and the country well, uh, we sure hope to see that happen. But Prateek, tell us a bit about how you're going to be using this capital uh, in the context of what is going on in the, the ed tech sector. I know you're slightly different from, uh, you know, the Baijus and unacademies of the world in that you're focusing on uh, developing a skill set, uh, you know, for jobs. Uh, but given the fund, uh, funding winter that we're seeing, the mass layoffs in the sector, what are you doing to protect and grow your business? What is your moat? This capital is going to be utilized not just in our existing programs, but we are also starting to another programs uh, which is meant for different kind of audience. So it's an outcome-based education, which is majorly targeting towards graduates as of now. Uh, but then we wanted to enter into the college uh, where the students are there, uh, just like what Bai Chung said, that we wanted to basically catch them early, uh, wanted to work with them, and wanted to build those skill sets uh, right when they're in college so that they don't miss out on their prime um, four years when they are spending over there. But what is going to be the path to profitability? And when we talk about expansion, uh, you had a couple of acquisitions last year. Uh, would you look at the inorganic route to grow now that you have some capital as well? No, we won't. So fundamentally, as I said, that we believe in building a very, very strong foundation towards building a business. And uh, one of the most important principles is that we don't believe in inorganic growth.
we would be focusing only on organic growth but it is so rapid that it is going to be a very very fast moving spaceship uh, going forward uh, at masai you're not playing a t20 right you're playing a longer term match uh, tell us uh, about your future plans uh, any plans of going public over the uh, longer term if you could give us some targets that you're hoping to achieve before you take that step so we currently have close to 7000 students studying with us across different learning tracks we have been able to graduate and place over 2000 students uh, with an average package of 7.5 LPA, which is higher than most of the NITs and IITs right now. Uh, and we intend to basically focus on the organic growth uh, from here onwards. Uh, the idea is that once we'll achieve the number, which is 25,000 students graduating and getting placed every year from Masai, that's the time when we'll take it to the IPO. Um, and so that what number is the is timeline that you're looking at? It's around two, two and a half years from here onwards. Two to two and a half years. And you know, how much funds have you raised so far and uh, up, how is it company valued at the moment? So we have raised uh, roughly around $20 million so far uh, across four different rounds and uh, that includes the existing one as well which is a $10 million round. Um, on the valuation side I think uh, uh, I, I prefer to remain it uh, undisclosed at the moment but yes uh, we, we have grown uh, from last one raised to this one it's, it's a substantial jump. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But coming up, space tech startup Bellatrix Aerospace will invest $76 million to establish its R&D center in Bengaluru. We put the startup's co-founder in the hot seat to find out more. Stay tuned.